Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Across the Ocean, the YouTube show for lovers of underwater filmmaking. My name's James in Miami. And this is Matthias, straight from Zurich. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Across the Ocean. As always, it is so great to see all of your smiling faces. We are, as always, so happy to see you. Matthias, can you believe that we are on episode 29? Well, I can, but at the same time, it is hard to believe that it's only taken us so little time to get here. Indeed. I mean, this, is, this is incredible. And uh, yeah, it's always nice to see you again, to talk to you, to be able to you know, exchange our thoughts and uh, what we've been doing and stuff. So, uh, and obviously sharing, sharing what we do here on this, uh, during these episodes with you guys as well, just gives me a lot of pleasure. And uh, that's why I really like these episodes yeah. of this series. Yeah, for those of you that are new to this show, Matthias and I get together on a monthly basis and we pick a topic that's something to do with underwater film filmmaking, video in particular, uh, camera gear or so on. Uh, but before we press record and, you know, we, we take turns to edit these things and one lives on my channel, Divers Ready, and the other one lives on Matthias Lebo's channel, the Underwater Film School, and, uh, you know, we, we alternate and so on. But for about an hour before we start rolling camera, it's just Matthias and I solving the world's problems. Drinking coffee, you know, talking about our lives, talking about what we got going on, the backstory of our channels, where we're going, where we're diving, what gear we're buying. Like, we do all of that off of camera. We, we should just roll camera from the start and just put that out as an episode. I was just going to say, let's do that. That would actually, I would really like that. Yeah. But we might have to, is that really a wise idea? Can we put everything out there that we talk about we, uh, before we, would, we start rolling? Listen, you're a lot nicer guy than me, so we'd have to bleep over all of my swearing. But <laughs> yes, yeah, all of all of my curse, cursing and curse words, we would have to bleep a lot of that out. But it is something we could do in a, in a candid way, so maybe that's a thought for the future. But in this episode, we thought it would be fun to discuss a topic that we haven't tackled yet on Across the Ocean, and that is white balancing your camera. Now, white balance we're going to talk a little bit about what is a white balance uh how it works as a feature of your camera and why it's so important for people who want to take their underwater filming more seriously and in addition to that uh matthias is going to take you through how to actually capture a white balance and some of the best sort of practices and best tips so um, i'm going to kick it off i think we'll talk about uh manual white balance as a feature so what is a manual white balance first and foremost we all know basic open water course uh, for scuba diving has taught us that water absorbs light, which means the deeper you go, the more uh, water between you and the sun, our light, our main light source, the more light is going to be absorbed, starting with the reds, going through the, uh, the electromagnetic light spectrum uh, until there is no color remaining and you're in complete pitch blackness. So if water is absorbing light, that is going to play with our color perception for our camera. So a manual white balance is a reference in the simplest term uh, to tell your camera here is a reference point of what this particular color actually looks like under the conditions that I'm diving. So in other words if you have a, a colored slate or a patch of white sand or if you're wearing white fins and so on we can talk about these things in a moment you point your camera at it and you hit a button on your menu system and you tell your camera what I'm pointing at right now is white. Now it doesn't look white underwater because of the absorption of colors and, and there might be some blue or some green in the water and so on but your camera is going to go okay well if that's white I can make an adjustment for all the other colors I'm seeing that you're going to be filming and say okay well if that's what that looks like in actual real life I can convert that color to make it as realistic as possible with the file that I actually save and output. So a manual white balance is basically you telling your camera this is what neutral color looks like and you can fan out from there and imagine what the actual scope of the rainbow looks like underwater. So it's a very very powerful tool that saves you a lot of work 
in uh, post-process and produces a much higher quality image. Now, one of the things you look for when you want to step up from your basic action camera like a GoPro or a DJI Osmo or something like that to actually getting a more of a professional rig or even just something with a little bit more features like an Olympus TG6, which we talk about many times on this channel, is the ability to capture a manual white balance whilst underwater in certain conditions. So having the ability through the housing to go into your menus and be like, okay, I'm gonna capture, ma capture a manual white balance, point your camera at something that's neutral and capture that manual white balance and then everything you film with that setting is gonna look sharp and all the colors are going to be absolutely beautiful but it's a step up in price it's an additional feature and that's one of the things you really want to look for in that step up so that's what a manual white balance is in essence another way to look at it would be um, the LUT packs you've seen uh, Matthias's fantastic LUT packs that he's produced for the GoPro um, which are basically a look up table that's what LUT stands for which is a drag and drop click and drop file that will color grade your footage you're basically doing that but in camera that's what a manual white balance is would you agree with that Matthias? Pretty much, yeah. As you were saying before, it was just it's just telling your camera what is proper white, and according to that, it can define all the other colors accordingly, and will just give you the best possible um, color color readout that you can get at any at any uh, in any situation. Yeah, fantastic. So I'm actually going to kick it over to you, being the expert, the professional underwater filmmaker of the two of us. Thank you, please, Mr. Matthias. Uh, and, uh, and, and have you talked to people about uh, how you go about capturing a manual white balance and maybe some of your best tips for doing it effectively? Yeah, thank you very much and thank you for the flowers. Um, there is um, obviously different ways how you can achieve the best possible colors, but a manual white balance is normally the best way. As James was saying, if you have a camera that is capable of doing that, it's just going to open up a whole new field of being able to just capture nicer footage. Now, the easiest way to get a manual white balance, I'm not going to be going into the technicality of your specific camera, how to get that, please familiarize yourself with your camera and with the menu system and how you can get to the menu point where it's gonna make it uh, capable for you, able for you to uh, set that manual white balance. But the easiest way is to use something like this, just a white slate, or it can also be gray. We normally talk about an 18% gray slate, which is the most accurate one uh, to get a good white balance, manual white balance. This one lives in my BCD pocket and I have it with me and uh, I just hold it in front of my camera and I try to cover um, probably about two thirds of um, the image that my camera is capturing at that time with the slate and then I just press that button to uh, set this as the, um, as the manual white balance or to define this section as proper white. And according to that, your camera will know what the other colors should look like and can adjust that and as James said before in a very uh, actually quite a very good way of saying that producing a lot that it's gonna apply onto your footage and giving you a proper readout that way um, another way how you can do this this is actually uh, a little more sophisticated slate it's the Kelvin color checker which has on one side just the regular 18 degree or 18 um, percent gray slate and on the other side it's got the color checker as you well as some of you who are filming on land maybe as well know you use that to get proper colors on land too now if you have something like this uh, what you can do you can get your white balance uh, manual white balance using the gray slate first and then turn it around and get a quick shot of all the colors here because then you've already got a reference to all the different colors and it's going to make it much much easier for you to color match different shots in between one another so i do that when it's very critical for me to get proper balancing and shot matching i always just hold this inside the frame before I start uh, actually capturing the action and then I've got a little reference which I can use to balance the colors and match the different colors in between each another. Um, 
So that's one way of doing it with slates. Another way of doing it is using new fins, but this only works if you have white fins. Okay, and that's also one of the reasons why you'll see a lot of photographers actually diving with white fins. Also, filmmakers, because then they can use their fins, just hold them out in front of them, stretch out their leg, take a or uh, get a manual white balance uh, using their fins. And that's easier for most people than pulling out a slate and doing it that way. Another way how you can do it um, is to use the sand to, uh, as a reference point for your white balance. This only works though if, for example, you're trying to film something that is close to the sand as well. Because this is one of the most, the more important things is that when you're doing a white balance, a manual white balance, you always wanna perform the procedure of manually uh, white balancing your camera, pointing the camera into the direction that you're gonna be taking your shot at that direction. So if I'm, for example, if this is the direction I wanna take my shot, then this is where I should be performing my white balance. But it's not gonna work if I perform my white balance here and then turn the camera around and take my shot here because it's gonna be a different, the light's gonna be hitting your object differently and uh, it's not gonna be quite as accurate as it could be um, in an ideal situation. So with the sand, it really only works if what you're filming is actually on the sand. That's how you can get your manual white balance done that way. And those are basically the three, uh, the three different methods how you can achieve your manual white balance using either a slate, your fins, the sand. Some people use other things as well. Anything that is close to the 18% gray will work to a certain degree for your manual white balancing. And it's oftentimes also a bit of a trial and error you know, trying it out, seeing whether it works, having a look at your screen, judging, even though that can be difficult underwater, and then re-evaluating and maybe redoing the manual white balance that way. Um, there's no, uh, there is no guarantee for success and for like the perfect white balance underwater. What we try to do is get as close to perfect as we possibly can. Yeah, that's fair. Does that you, make you're sense? You're trying to take most of the guesswork out of the editing process. So you're trying to help exactly. yourself, you know, uh, there's a hated phrase in filmmaking, we'll fix it in post. Well, yeah. let's, try to, let's try to get it right in camera first and then make little subtle adjustments and tweaks in post rather than we'll fix it in post. So the manual white Absolutely. balance is gonna help you guys a hell of a lot, take your filmmaking to the next level. Um, so 100% agree, thank you for all those tips. Matthias, again, pro level knowledge that you're sharing no worries, uh, for free pleasure. here on YouTube. We, uh, we always appreciate, uh, you know, I learn. I learn all the time sitting in with Matthias. It's, it's like, this is, this is so much valued for me. Um, a few things I would probably add to that as well, just from personal experience as well. I think it's, um, you know, uh, absolutely vital what you said about recapturing uh, a white balance several times throughout the dive as, as uh, your depth perhaps changes, you know, and you're going up and down on a typical dive profile, you're gonna need to recapture a white balance yeah. because obviously at different depths, different levels of uh, color or light are absorbed. Um, so don't be afraid to do seven, eight, 10, 12 white balances per actual shoot. They're not gonna change that much, but it's gonna keep your footage a lot more consistent. So the more comfortable you are with the menu settings of your camera and the faster you can do a white balance, the less of a thing it becomes. Um, also, uh, I would add to what Matthias said, um, pay attention to your, your light settings as well. Um, you know, one, one mistake I made once was I got down on my dive site and I'm at my target depth and I do my white balance and it looks cool. And then I turn my lights on and I go filming. I'm like, what, what are you, are you doing, man? Come on. You just turn lights on, which means you now need to do a manual white balance again. So light settings, like how bright are you gonna have your lights? You might wanna think about exposure first and then doing a white balance. So you've got your, your scene well lit and then be like, okay, these are the lights that I'm using. If you are 
let's say you're shooting with no lights at all, and you're on a shallow reef and you're just shooting uh, using ambient light, be aware of lighting condition changes. So if you're shooting on a sunny or partially cloudy day and the sun goes behind a cloud, and all of a sudden the quality of the light changes underwater, you might need to do another manual white balance again. So don't think of manual white balance as a set it and forget it, oh, I did my manual white balance on, on a dive and I'm good for the rest of the dive. Be aware of your lighting conditions, be aware of your depth, and do multiple uh, manual white balances as the dive goes on. But I think that's about it for, for this episode on, on manual white balance as an in introduction. Um, you know, to add to what Matthias said, RTFM, read the manual, make sure you know your uh, instructions and how your camera works. We can't possibly go through all the different models out there and tell you how to do a manual white balance on your camera. Um, but that if your camera has that feature, it's definitely one you should be using underwater. But Matthias, again, as always, so great to see you, mate. And uh, thanks so much for sharing your pro-grade knowledge with us plebs out here in the uh, YouTube-verse. Um, my absolute pleasure. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to uh, actually see you next month as I'm passing through Zurich and uh, maybe we get to, uh, get to spend some time together on my way back from the sardine run, so. I hope so, I really yeah. hope so, I can't wait. Very cool. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank awesome. you so much for joining us here on Across the Ocean. And Matthias and I will see you next month. Take care. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs>